what we're looking at here is a bench top charcoal gasification device that I am using to run some tests on to help determine certain design parameters in an actual working device. What you're looking at here basically is a steam superheater that I'm hoping to bring steam up to nearly a thousand degrees with this device. Inside of this combustion chamber is a charge of activated carbon and this entire tube is kind of acting as a hopper. I have a thermal couple on the top of that hopper that is labeled here B and A is just a probe that I kind of have hanging out. I'm going to be inserting that directly into the steam discharge port to see if we can are in fact getting extremely high temperatures. I'm going to be a couple doing a couple of solder tests where I touch certain areas of this device with a piece of solder to see if it will melt. See how hot we're getting in some areas. I'm going to be taking some temperature readings on this um, superheat preheater. And basically, how this thing works is air from this blower is injected in through this exhaust manifold heat exchange. It comes up into the combustion chamber on the bottom here, heats this chamber up to red hot temperatures. And I have an annular exhaust shroud here that acts as a screen also. And the exhaust then goes through the little screen ports out into the exhaust shroud and down into this secondary superheater. Now, the steam that's going into this secondary superheater is injected into the bottom of the combustion chamber. And that's gonna be modulated with a needle valve up here. That is this needle valve here, actually. This needle valve here is what controls the superheated steam output. Anyway, back to where we were going with this. The exhaust travels down the exhaust port into the heat exchange. Out the bottom, through this tube here, and into this swirl burner that I'm gonna see if that'll produce any combustible gas with. I'm also going to be taking some temperature readings of this other exhaust line here. I just want to know what gets how hot so when I make another one I'll know where to put all these superheater coils. Like this area may not even get hot enough to be worthwhile. I know it's going to but I want to know how hot it's getting. I need to be using up all this area with superheater coil basically. I'm also testing out a couple of compounds, some glues. I have some seven or 600 degree silicone. I don't know how well that's going to go. I should have just brazed this whole thing together, but the problem is this is such a large piece that even with 20 amps of power coming off of that hydrogen torch with map gas connected to it, and another torch blasting on it, I still didn't have enough heat. So, anyway, if we do get a good flame coming out of this thing, basically what's gonna happen is that flame is gonna be used to heat this reactor cavity that is inside yet another steam superheater coil. Some tests that I've already done have shown that this thing isn't gonna work unless it has an extremely huge flame blasting on it. Anyone who isn't familiar with how the gasification of charcoal works is basically that when you heat an area of carbon by the combustion of carbon, the surrounding area will produce carbon monoxide gas from the carbon dioxide produced from the combustion of the charcoal. So the exhaust gases from the combustion of charcoal in most devices is not CO2. It is in fact carbon monoxide, which is a flammable gas. That's one of the peculiar things about burning pure carbon that a lot of people don't know. But I'm also gonna be injecting steam into it. So we should get a pretty good hydrogen flame going on this thing also. And the main goal in mind here is to produce a gasifier that operates by discharging a nitrogen free gas stream so as to take full advantage of the available horsepower of a particular engine because just a regular gasifier 
if you were to hook this up to a 10 horsepower engine, if it were to be capable of putting off 10 horsepower worth of fuel, you would only get four horsepower out of it. Just based on the energy density of hydrogen and carbon monoxide gas combined, which is also called water gas. It's a very old process, this is nothing new, but the way I'm doing it is definitely unique. This is not something that I got off the internet. This is uh, stuff that I've just come up with, hoping to streamline the process. And the main purpose of this test is to determine how hard it is to produce steam issuing from a red hot tube. I've tried it in the past, and it is nearly impossible to get steam at red hot temperatures. It, it's extremely capable of holding energy. It has an extremely large heat capacity is what I was trying to say, I guess. So, basically I have a steam boiler here that's gonna be providing our steam. It's a little Bunsen burner I've made up there. And I'm gonna run a, a test until all this carbon in here is burnt. That way I'm gonna ignite it as through this ignition port. And I'm gonna have to use an oxyhydrogen torch to do this because it's gonna be uh, fairly hard to light that with a regular torch. So I'm gonna stick the torch up to that, get that carbon red hot with this blower going, and hopefully amazing things will start to happen from there. But first I gotta get this boiler up to pressure. I'm thinking as soon as this boiler hits about 50 PSI's, I'll go ahead and um, fire this bad boy up. I just want to make a quick note that this reaction is extremely dangerous. Um, the carbon monoxide that's going to be released is poisonous and will kill you. I do not advise you attempt this experiment at all, but if for some reason you are forced to do so, please look up all the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning, which include things like headache, confusion, nausea, and things of that matter. So, I have two blowers. And although they are blowing into my ceiling, perhaps aren't the best ventilators that I could have. I'm sure I'm blowing pressure back through these cracks and stuff. But I do have a carbon monoxide detector in place. I do intend to fire up that squirrel cage to blow some air out of here. And in addition to that, I'm only going to run this test for a half hour. So, hopefully nothing goes wrong as far as that's concerned because this thing is going to produce copious amounts of carbon monoxide gas okay the pressure's starting to climb i'm going to go ahead and fire up the combustion chamber i'm at 827 25 celsius at about maybe 95 on that okay Something is definitely happening inside that combustion chamber there. Things are heating up. And that steam is really flying out of there. Like it is being superheated. I'm gonna put about 62 watts. Yeah, that is definitely being superheated. Definitely getting really hot in there. I'm going to turn up the heat. Okay, that sucker is getting hot. It's smoking. Everything seems to be running steady. The steam has gone clear. This is an indication that it is superheated. I'm going to turn it up a little more now. Okay, I put the probe right in there. See what it does. Get the temperature on this steam. 
already. I'm getting some pretty impressive temperatures, but this is not what I had in mind. The whole thing seems to be getting extremely hot. It's changing color for me there. Steam is really coming out of there now. I'm going to open it up a little. There. I'm going to turn on the secondary steam line. See what that does. Now that just puts steam into the combustion chamber. Well, if you can see that flammable gas that I am getting. Look at that. There we go. I'm going to turn the lights out. Pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to check that steam. I got a lot going on right here. That steam is still blasting out of there. Still getting visible flame. I'm gonna up this steam knob now. Ooh, that leaks. I'm gonna see if that will increase the gas output here. And it does. I am adjusting the steam input down there through the superheater manifold. Looks like I might be getting a little too much in there now. So right there at that setting seems to be optimal. I am blasting some super hot steam out of this thing. Very cool. I don't know how much time we have, so before I run out, I'm going to up the power a little bit here. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to up the steam. That is a lot of steam being injected in there. At about 120 watts. This thing is getting so hot that it's like smoking out. Okay, I need to shut down. That seemed to be a little too hot. I lost the flame. I think I'm over steaming. I think I had too much steam being injected into there. hearing a weird sound in there that I never heard before. I don't like it. Whoa! Something's going on inside of there. It's like a jet engine effect. that 
Yeah. The fuel's combusting inside the device somewhere. Uh-oh. I just got so hot that my solder joint broke there. So that means that my steam's over 400 degrees off this superheater preheater. I'm gonna have to shut down and stop this here. Wow. Didn't even think to check my other thermal couple. It's showing only 38 Celsius on that. Okay, so basically I had 10 things going on at once there. I don't have enough thermal couple probes. What I need to do is mount this probe directly into that steam jet because I wasn't getting accurate readings. I wasn't staying there long enough for the probe to heat up. Um, I think the device could be run at higher levels, but we're going to have to find that out in the next test. I am very pleased to see that that solder joint failed. Don't know the melting point of that particular silver solder, but uh, that's some pretty exciting stuff. To melt that means we were at least at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty good deal there. And in order for this stuff here to cake up like that, you're talking 2,000 degrees probably. I think I now have a leak. So, we're gonna take it apart and see what happened. This thing here finally climbed a little bit in temperature. It is hot to the touch. And that's a wrap for today.